Elephant and Castle, also known as The Elephant, was once regarded for its thriving shopping area. It was also known as the Piccadilly Circus of the South in the years before the war. The area is now subject to a master plan redevelopment budgeted at £1.5 billion. A development framework was approved by Southwark Council in 2004. The plan is to restore the elephant to the role of a major urban hub for South London. Located in the London borough of Southwark, Elephant and Castle is on the tube lines Northern and Baker Loo. The area is in close proximity of the Battersea Power Station and Nine Elms and could benefit from the Northern Line extension as the American and other embassies move into Wandsworth and the new regeneration of the Battersea Power Station area. One of the new residential towers being built is One, the Elephant, that will feature 37 stories with 287 apartments. So what does this mean for the residents? As Elephant and Castle moves forward, issues have arisen, such as affordable housing agreements, provision of education and health facilities, transportation and the quality of life for current and future residents. I met with Jeremy Leach, chair of South Park Living Streets, to discuss the impact of some of these changes on re local residents. I think it's really important just to take a step back and have a think as to why it's suddenly such a um, hot spot for regeneration and change. I think sort of it, it's almost worth going back to the Second World War and the time, the time that the Elephant and Castle was called um, was called the Piccadilly of the the Piccadilly Circus of the South. So the Elephant and Castle area used to be the place where it was home to enormous numbers of shops, places of work theatres, places of leisure, and it was an absolute um, hub of activity in South London. It's almost like all roads led to the elephant and then distributed everybody in towards the city. What happened in the Second World War that it got terribly heavily bombed and it was really left, um, you know, left in a terrible state after the Second World War. At the same time, planning policy and plan ideas about cities changed dramatically. At the end of the war there was a thing created called the Abercrombie Plan which was a, a plan that would basically make all the routes into London a series of motorways and they would a lot of those would converge at the Elephant so it became a place where the idea was it would become a place where um, motor traffic would be funneled through and into the city and then out to the suburbs where people want to live. So when finally the area was redeveloped in the early 60s and 70s it was very much a car centric uh, model of regeneration um, as you can see, there are enormous roads, very much all sort of inner motorways have been developed through the area. The housing that was created was in a sort of Corbusian way of blocks and social, social housing that kind of turned its, it had the right spirit of wanting to create green spaces, but it tended to turn its back on the local area and so places became closed off. And I think that what changed over the next 20, 25 years was the value of land has risen enormously, perhaps to everyone's surprise 30 years ago, um, when they thought people wouldn't want to live in central, central urban areas. And at the same time, the desire for people to live here has become stronger, the value of land's increased, and this location is north of Victoria, so it's really, really close to the centre of London. And I think that's what has been the context for really an enormous change in what's perceived as the role of the elephant. So, I mean, uh, uh, one of the big changes that occurred after the Second World War was this focus on the car and car-centric car -centric development. And I think that uh, um, a real change is in the perception of how people should move through and around the area. The whole issue is made complex by the fact that um, the, the London Borough of Southwark is the highway authority for many roads in the area, but not all of them. For many roads in this part, the, tra the transport or highway authority is Transport for London. So there's a real strong link between Transport for London and Southwark in terms of trying to provide solutions to this. The big, big problem is, is, is the domination of the area by motor vehicles. And the, the, there are two big discussions going on at the minute, one of which is the future of the northern roundabout, which is currently an enormous um, gyratory light roundabout which feeds into a number of roads absolutely deter um, 
movement by pedestrians and movement by cycle. There are enormous now, thanks to the explosion in cycling, there's been an enormous increase in the number of cyclists, but they are travelling in an absolutely car-based um, infrastructure. The Elephant and Castle Northern Roundabout has the highest level of casualties of any location in London in terms of um, injuries and, to a lesser extent, obviously fatalities. So getting the getting the transport, getting the roads right is absolutely part of it. It's, it's so it's still not proven yet whether those plans will prove real benefit to pedestrians and cyclists. But the intention is to work that out. Probably remove the roundabout and replace it with a with a peninsula, which will mean there's more space for people. But that certainly isn't finished yet. The other thing that we'll need to change again to tie into the the public transport issues is is the, the um, upgrading of the tube station. At the minute, it's relatively small with lifts. Transport for London are and the Lend Lease, the developer in Southwark, are working on um, redeveloping that, probably with escalators, which can obviously handle enormous larger amounts of people. The other thing is it's a really um, a really poorly um, it's a really poor railway station at the Elephant, very poor connections into the local area. Again that's another thing that really needs work on is how to tie the overground railway station into, into the public transport links in the Elephant area. The real threat is whether the transportation problems based around the car can be overcome. Um, it's absolutely not proven the commitment of Transport for London to reduce the impact of motor vehicles and it's part of a larger conversation that's going on in London but you cannot have you cannot have these enormous much more denser much more people living in this area and then still have this also this commitment to move as many ve motor vehicles through here as quickly and as efficiently as possible something's got to give and if you want a place that's going to be attractive to live some of this severance through these main roads has got to go.